Hello and thanks for joining us once again on a very special edition of Punters Inside Run. It's day two of the championships, another four big group ones. Mick Sharkey, as always, is with me. Shark, before we get on to this week, last week, we sit around here, we do our tips on a soft five. Then the rains open up and all of a sudden you get a heavy 15. Yes. All the tips go out the window. Average SP was 20 to 1. It was tough. All I can say, Matty, is God bless magic time. It was a saviour, wasn't it? it we was. had to wait till the last, yep. but finally we got something to pull us out of the uh, out of the mud, yep. as it were. Yes, one of your Sydney best of the day, week. magic so, time. Uh, more rain this week. I think we're all hopeful again for a soft track. And then the track managers come out this morning and said, not going to be a soft track, it's going to be heavy again. All right, so we're going to do things a little bit different. James Lamb has had a well-earned uh, day off because we're just going to concentrate on Sydney. We'll do all four Group 1s, and then Shark will do his uh, his multi, his perm, and we'll do the perk, the quaddy, on Sydney. And that might be the change we need to get home with a big result. All right, let's get stuck into it straight away. Let's talk about the big one. The Queen Elizabeth Stakes has been mooted as the ashes <laughs> of racing. Australia's Animo up against the UK's Dubai Honour. Well, there'll be soggy ashes anyway, with the, uh, <laughs> the, the way the track and the weather is. But exactly. Look, there is some talk, Matty, that if this track is a, an absolute bog, that Animo may not run. So Godolphin sort of suggesting during the week that they don't have to run. It's not critical for his campaign overseas. Uh, if it's a heavy 10 or a real boggy, sloppy track. Is that like sending track? the Victorian state team over to play England in the Ashes? It might be, but the other thing is Dubai Honor may not like that sort of ground yeah, either. So does that throw the race open to some roughies like, he's a shocker who loves the wet. Alan Kerr, who loves the wet, was disappointing in the yeah, All-Star Mile, but uh, Mike Moroni said he may have heard and should have had the horse on a, a softer track. Even a horse uh, like Monophilia, does it come into contention? Mm. So, well, yeah, it's, I think it's a little bit more open than people think. Well, that's good because I was going to ask you that in a second, but the market early says that the run of Dubai Honour is the one we should be following. Maybe. Uh, I'm a maybe too. These European horses can often land here and go whack first up and, and light, the, light the place up. We all say, wow, this thing's a superstar and then regress a little bit second up. That was an absolute all-time career-best performance from mm. Dubai Honor. Does he have another one of those runs in him or does he come back a little bit from that? On his European form, he, he doesn't get close to Animo. He's not a Group 1 horse in Europe, he's a Group 2 horse. So you have to say, well, is this a new and improved Dubai Honor? Is that his standard? Or was that just one out of the absolute box and, and he can't repeat it? I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about Dubai Honour. OK, well, uh, with that, where did you land on your top three? Because I've, I'm staying with Australia in the Ashes. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but where, where have you landed? Well, Animo's he's the heavyweight champ, isn't yep. he? Yep. He just he takes punches, he, he absorbs pressure, sitting wide, no cover, getting everything in favour in the run. It doesn't matter. He just gets the job done. I think as a starting point in a horse race, I want to be with the horse that gets the job done more often than not. Animo's on top. I think he's a shocker. Number 11 is the value in the race. Wet track, he's a horse that nearly won a McKinnon Stakes uh, last spring. He's certainly capable. Dubai Honor in next, but look, El Patroness, Cascadian, uh, the other horse we mentioned before, Montefilia, or Alan Kerr, they're all capable of running a really big race at odds on a really heavy track. I'm going with Animo, uh, fourth up to 2,000 metres. You look at the history yeah. and it's, uh, you know, the Rose Hill Guineas, a Cox Plate, second in the Cox Plate. This is when this horse uh, goes at its best, fourth up to 2,000 metres. I'll put Dubai on it in for second off the back of that run. And Cascadian's absolutely flying at the flying. moment. And yeah. doesn't mind a wet track, so uh, the best of the rest for me is Cascadian. So we're with Animo to win the Ashes. Let's get to the Sydney Cup. It's a Group 1 race over the two miles. Cleveland came out here to win the Sydney Up, sort of caught the eye in the town. Um, and finished really well. Wide barrier, there's a few here who got a wide barrier. May not be a bad thing. Yeah. You know, we're nearly two thirds of the way through uh, a, a two week carnival by this stage on heavy ground. Mm -hmm. Maybe the best going will be out wider. They'll certainly be looking to use a lot of the track. So I'm sort of uh, letting those that have drawn wide just off a little bit here. I liked Cleveland going into the Tankard. There's no reason to get off him. He was favourite for a Melbourne Cup last year for mm -hmm. most of the year. They decided to, to not go to that race and go to Sydney instead. His run in the tank room was great. He's on top for me. I think Arapaho coming off a Group 1 tank room win. It was a surprise win. It was, but he's two wins in a row it's now. A wet track, loves a wet track. Loves a wet track and he drops in weight. Oh, and good. his run was much better than it looks on paper in the Melbourne Cup last year. So I think he's over the odds at 13 bucks. King Frankel, number 14, next best. 
Okay, King Franco, who was, uh, comes out of that same race, had to get going early, won't have to do that this time, but I've gone with Cleveland on top, same with you, the target race. Drops down to just 51 kilos, a lightweight in this sort of race is perfect, has won on a heavy track before. High emotion, got too far back in the chairman's quality, but we know this horse stays third in the Melbourne Cup, the wide barrier, so getting back, uh, you know, as you said, some of these wide barrier horses will go back and he does stay. And I've got Verve, not Verve, another lightweight with just a 50 kilos on the quick backup of seven days, but uh, you know, second in an Auckland Cup, so is a proven stay. Super fit too. Yeah, super fit. So uh, a little bit of value for me there in the Sydney Cup. Well, that's two of the group ones. We've still got the uh, Oaks and the Queen of the Turf, and we'll look at those next. insights and content. That's better. Chances are you're about to lose. This is Punters Inside Run. We're looking at the Group 1s at Randwick Day 2 of the Championships. The first one to come up on the agenda will be the Australian Oaks. Pavitra comes off a good run in the Vinery Stud. Ran into Prowess, who we think is very, very special. Yeah. But Pavitra, uh, we know, can stay. But will it handle a really heavy track if we have a heavy track? Don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's been on heavy ground twice. Uh, hasn't been able to run a place. But look... Fitness, I think, and class probably tells, class, tells yep. a little mm -hmm. bit more in, in these sort of conditions. She's in the game. I think there's better value around her, though. And I, I'm with probably the, the recent form line, the well, backup from the hearts? Adrian Knox. I am talking You have hearts. to take notice of that run, don't we? It was a monstrous win last yeah. week. And look, from nowhere, she was a big price, but just joined in on her third start at about the 400 metres. Just absolutely put them to the sword. No issue at all in the heavy ground nope. last week. Mm -hmm. 2,000 metres... No problem. She was very strong through the line. I wouldn't have thought stepping up to 24 will be a problem. She is the horse to beat for mine. You're getting each way odds. There was another horse in that race, Manny, that ran a massive race, was Premise. And Premise was back and wide, never really had cover. Chad Schofield had to get going early, flushed her out, probably told late, but she kept staying on. She's drawn much better this week. She will run every metre of the 2400 and I think she'll get through the wet. All right, give us your top three for the Oaks. Arts on top number five. Number four, Polygon next best. I think mm -hmm. building up to this, uh, didn't go to the New Zealand Oaks, is focused on this race. Instead, she's ready to peak. Premise number 10, next best. I'll go with Pavitra, the favourite. Is the class, is the horse to beat. But, yeah, if we do get into the heavy 10 range, maybe a little bit of a question mark on it. Arts, you cannot ignore that run. And Hugh Bowman takes the ride and he knows what to do in a big race. Uh, one start on a soft and one on a heavy has one on both. So we know that's Arts. And the New Zealand Oaks winner, Penny Wecker, also in the betting. Last three runs have been very good, culminating in that New Zealand Oaks win. Just another strong filly to come out of New Zealand who are absolutely flying at the moment. So uh, should be a fascinating race. And we get to the uh, Queen of the Turf, the next group one we're going to look at. It's a wait for age race over the 1,600 metres. Alcohol free, we haven't seen. But it's got form around Bayeed, and oh, you yeah. cannot ignore that form. Bayeed, one of the best, if not the best in the world at the time. Multiple Group 1 winning mare in Europe from 1,200 metres to 1,600 metres. Importantly, she won a coronation over 1,600 on a heavy track, and European heavy tracks get very heavy. Yep. We know that, so she's no issue in the ground. She cost $10 million what? Australian. $10 million. And it's alcohol free. You can't even drink alcohol champagne. Free. Can't even, that's the most expensive alcohol free yeah. I've ever seen. That's heaps normal. Yeah. You've got to ask yourself the question Would Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bob be running a $10 million horse yep. if it wasn't ready to win? I think she'll go here. Serious uh, racehorse. She will go here and make a meal of these, I reckon. I think she's the most likely winner. She's one of the better bets on the day. All right, let's get stuck straight into then your top three. I mean, we're, we're agreeing at the moment. This is a bit scary. Because it is. We've got a heavy track and we're agreeing, and I think we might agree here again. I think we might land on the same exactter in this race too. Alcohol free on top of me. Hope in your heart, number five. Yeah. was huge. Huge in the, in the Doncaster. Doncaster. What an honest mare she is. Just yeah. a great horse. Uh, ties her backside off every time she goes around. Fangirl number two, next best. But alcohol free, one of the bets of the day for me. I've got Hope in Your Heart second behind Alcohol Free, as I said, a serious racehorse. Uh, Hope in Your Heart loves the 1600 at Ramwick in great form. Levante's a Group 1 winner in New Zealand, beaten less than a length in a Group 1 behind Animo, and it's three for three on a soft surface. The Kiwi form again holding up, so uh, I've got Levante in for third. All right, that is our four Group 1s. That leads us in to uh, finish off the talk about Sydney with your best bet and your best value bet. I think the best bet, short odds, but race five, number one, half cabin. 
you're around that dollar eighty five, dollar ninety mark, but I think he just goes and beats these. Mm -hmm. I think they've worked him out. He's a sprinter, yep. not a miler. Gets, and handles the wet. Handles the wet. Remember that Guinea's probably yep. on a very heavy track, what he did to them at Caulfield that day. Osipenko was well adrift and he's been competitive with older horses at Group One level. Mm -hmm. Alcohol free is definitely a bet. I think the best value is in the Sydney Cup, race seven, number five, Arapaho. Arapaho for Bjorn Baker. I've gone all these group ones and I found my best bet in the Midway Championship final. Yeah. <laughs> race four, number five, <laughs> Kobe. I can't believe I've said this. It's had six starts for four wins in two seconds. Everything this horse does is good. It's been favourite the last four starts and won. And its first up win was very impressive. And that form race has turned out to be a very good form race with horses winning left, right and centre. So I've gone for Kobe in race four as my best bet. And my best value bet was Atmosphere in race two. Um, nice return on the Kensington track over the 1400. Drops eight kilos for this. Um, last prep, his last two runs at 1400 for a win and a second two. Not magic, magic time. time. Well, we know that's good form. We know that is good form. The Shark found that beautifully last week. All right, that is a big day's racing. We have our fingers crossed for the weather and hopefully we can get closer to a soft than a heavy 10, but it still should be a wonderful day. Uh, that's our group ones. But next, Shark will have his perm and we'll shift the perk to Sydney. Racing. Then you love the new betting brand for racing fans. With exclusive markets, promotions, insights, and content. That's better. Chances are you're about to lose. Big day in Sydney, day two of the championships, and this is where we get a little bit creative. Uh, we're going to find uh, what Shark thinks is his multi of the day, and he's been going beautifully at that. And I'll start with the same race multi, and we're going to go on the Australian Oaks. Okay. All right, so I've got Pavitra to finish in the top two, fingers crossed with the weather. We both liked Arts, but yes. I'll give a little bit of a percentage there. Arts to finish in the top four. And I thought Pierre Rossa really finished off well in that Viner yeah. stud. Yeah, good run. Um, good run to finish uh, fast to finish in the top four. So Pavitra top two, Arts and Pierre Rossa top four for your same race multi. All right, we're well ahead on the uh, the perm, mate. We are. So what are you doing? We're going further ahead, As Matthew. we do, yes. Because I like to be greedy. <laughs> greedy is good, as somebody once famously said. So we go further ahead. Hello, Michael, I know you're watching. <laughs> race five, number one, half cabin. Yep. First leg, I think he just goes and ticks that box. Then we go to the Oaks, arts to run a place. So that's race six, number five, like to run it. a place. Then race nine, number one, let's put our faith in the $10 million mare. Alcohol, alcohol free, free to win. I like it. There you go. So it's around $16. $16. Beautiful. But we'll take that. We'll take that. We'll take it. Got 22 two weeks ago. We you did. were a champion. All right, let's go to my quaddy. I'll start with some numbers, Shark. Feel free to massage it. Okay. Um, because I've gone very wide in the Sydney Cup. Right. I've gone eight runners. I've got Lay them on me. Gold Trip, Arapaho, Surefire, Cleveland, High Emotion, King Frankel, Verve Not Nerve, and Gin Martini. So we've covered everything we've talked about. Can I throw in... Possibly the best heavy tracker in the race. I'm writing it down. Number three, Baron Samedi. Oh, I wasn't quite sure. It's just hard to what do you want to drop one? No. Okay. Let's let's just let's make sure. And say so slog through the mud. Slog through got the them mud. All covered. I've got Animo and Dubai Honor. I've got a feeling you're gonna add one here. What's the best upset? She's a shock. Do you reckon he's a shocker? I don't know. About El Patroness? I don't know. I'm just thinking of something loose we can throw in there and look like geniuses. Look like geniuses? Yeah, yeah look like it. Well, you've got glasses. <laughs> My wings are like a shield. <laughs> Let's go, he's a shocker. Okay, he's a shocker goes in. All right, so we're nine by three. Uh, now, it, we, we've got alcohol free, yes. Levante, Hope in Your Heart, and Cyril O. Miss, who's I, flying for Simon I'm Lyle. comfortable with that. Yeah, I, I thought that I like sort that. of covered it off. Yeah, I like that. And then I've got four in the last. Okay. I didn't know a lot about this last race. I've got um, Zapateo, Kaiku, Jalai, and Never Talk. You know, I'm comfortable with that too. Well, comfortable. I think you've got that covered. 16, 4, 27, 108, 432. So that's going to give us around uh, like 23%. It's not quite a finger tapper, because yeah. that oh, I think the, the, the track is going to just it, it, play its it could part. Do anything, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm mildly confident. 
All right, there it is, the Quaddy in Sydney, nine by three by four by four. My maths is quick, but we'll say that it's uh, around 23% for uh, for a hundred dollar investment. Mate, uh, enjoy what should be a terrific day. That we've got our fingers crossed, as I mentioned a couple of times, but uh, it is all about the weather sometimes in Sydney racing, isn't it? It is, Maddie. But uh, we'll enjoy watching it anyway. Have a great weekend. Happy punting. And to you as well. I hope you enjoy Easter. If you are driving, stay safe. We know it's that time of the year, but uh, enjoy what should be a wonderful day's racing at Sydney. We'll see you next time on Punters Inside Run. If you're in love with racing, then you'll love the new betting brand for racing fans. With exclusive markets, promotions, insights and content, that's better. Chances are you're about to lose.